ChatGPT just introduced one of the most useful updates that I think has a lot of potential. And I think most people are not realizing how powerful this could be. So I want to show you a very practical use case that I'm going to use right now, starting today with this new ChatGPT update. So here's the update. This requires GPT-4. This is an update related to GPTs after the release of this entire GPT store where you could publicly find and use GPTs. But now with this update inside of any chat GPT conversation, you could just type in the at sign and it will pull up any GPT that you have recently used or that you have pinned. So these are some of the ones that are recently used. And then what you could do with this is you could bring him into the conversation. Basically the current workflow is I go to my GPTs right now and I have a bunch of them I've made for different reasons. I'm making one, I just made one today, for example, that I'm gonna start using. And inside of these, basically, all I do is I go into that GPT and I have a conversation here. And this has the knowledge base, it has all the custom instructions. It's very designed for a very specific use case. But then the entire conversation basically is stuck in this one chat, right? Everything that I do is only limited to this GPT's knowledge base and information and the custom instructions. But now I just go to GPT-4, I type in the add mention sign here, and there it is, there's the latest one I used, and I bring it into the conversation. Now I'm talking to that GPT inside of the regular ch chat GPT. So all the context of the conversation are going to have the knowledge of GPT-4 as well, and I could go back and forth. So I'm gonna show you a very practical application here, because right now what people, are doing is they're trying to connect a bunch of different GPT from the public GPT store to kind of try to get some things done. But because every GPT that was created publicly didn't know about this update, right, because it just came out, these are more silo GPTs. They're just meant to work on their own and they don't really communicate well. A lot of times, again, OpenAI for some reason releases things more in like beta format. So we have to kind of figure out how to connect things together. But what I've done is actually I build my own suite of GPTs and I'm gonna now use them in the same exact conversation inside of regular chat GPT-4 and I don't have to go back and forth between a bunch of different GPTs that don't have that context of the previous conversation, okay? This was one of my favorite things with plugin. You could turn on three plugins and plugins are technically still around. So with plugins, what you were able to do is you were able to basically install and activate multiple different plugins, up to three. And then I was able to do really, really cool things, connecting the power of those three. Now with this GPT update, you have infinite GPTs, which are now replacing these plugins in the same chat. Imagine having access to basically, I think there were like a thousand or more plugins that were created. Now, all of those are gonna be GPTs, very powerful. Let me show you my use case. So I'm gonna type in the at mention sign and this is only, by the way, going to show you recent GPTs that you've used. So if you type in a GPT and you don't see it here, you actually have to go find it. So for example, if you go to the Explore GPTs tab to the GPT store and you wanna use Tutor Me, if you try to pull this up in your chat, it's not gonna find it most likely. So you have to actually open it up Again, this is one of the limitations right now, but I think they're gonna fix this too or make it easier to find. And you just start a chat like this, okay? So let me just close this chat. I started this chat. I'm gonna just refresh this page. Now, if I go to a chat GPT conversation and I press that mention sign, that should be the number one. So you could do this with private GPTs, unlisted GPTs, the ones also the ones I'm using are part of my team. So my team also has access to this. So all kinds of GPTs could be pulled up here. At first I thought, it was only public GPTs, but my use case is gonna be just with the private ones that I've trained for specific things, okay? So I'm gonna type in the at mention sign and video spark idea is what I'm gonna use first. So in my workflow, I'm gonna create content, right? It's either educational content, course content. In this case, it's specific to video content for YouTube. So the first thing I need to do is come up with the video idea and this one I've trained it to come up with video titles too. I may in the future separate those two so I could refine the GPT even more. The more refined the custom instructions are with these GPTs, the more useful. That's why you just wouldn't use ChatGPT 
or GPT-4 here and you would use these GPTs instead. And now I'm gonna use it inside of the chat. Okay, so the prompt I used, I just said, give me five video ideas. And the way I trained this GPT was, it literally could only answer me in these like titles or one sentence ideas. It just can't go beyond that. And this one I just kept privately for myself and I give a ton of data, ton of data on titles, ton of data on ideation. And it has that inside of its custom instructions. So I could go through and I actually like this one, simplifying GPT-4 for beginners. But now here's the cool part. This is where the power of this new update comes into play. I'm gonna press X here. That GPT is gone. I'm going to use the next one because the next one, I have one over here. It's called Video Blueprints. So I'm going to type in Video Blueprints. So this one, again, you have to make sure you recently used it here or it's one of them that you've pinned to the top of your GPTs. So this Video Blueprint Creator, it really has two purposes. I told it to create the hook of the video, basically how a video starts. I gave a ton of different hooks, basically the first five, 10 seconds, a bunch of videos that I like that I've created that have performed well over time. And then in my training, I also give it kind of a rough outline trying to do a numbers list and things like that. And look, now it's talking to the video blueprint creator, but it's also pulling in from the previous GPT. So now this daisy chaining GPTs, this is the power now by having the context from a previous GPT. Before I had to basically copy and paste. In this case, it wouldn't take that much time, but as you get more intricate and you have a long daisy chain, in this case, I'm gonna use maybe more than four different GPTs in the same chat to give me everything I need in the video creation process. So there we go. Now we have the title. This is gonna give me the hook that I described in when I was, again, training that GPT. It's gonna give me a little bit of an overview here and the steps basically in the format that I explained. In the case of my YouTube videos, I write the script. I just use GPT more for the outline and for the revision part, but not for the actual scripting. Like the words I'm saying, I wrote myself with a little bit of help of chat GPT, but really mainly on the outline. So this is gonna take me to where I want here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create the video. Then once I make the video, what well, was the next step of the video creation process is the thumbnail. So I created another GPT called Thumbnail Wizard. And this one I trained for making YouTube thumbnails. So create a YouTube thumbnail for this video. Now I don't have to explain the video. I don't have to give it the title. It knows this from this whole memory of this chat GPT conversation. That's what's really cool. But it's now talking to the third GPT in the same exact conversation. And the way I trained this thumbnail wizard GPT, for example, I basically only asked it to create things that don't have text and are only for the background. So because I still wanna put a picture of myself here and I still wanna put text, as long as Dolly messes up the text in the spelling of it, which it still does very often, I'm still not gonna use it to generate the entire thumbnail. I'm gonna take this background I'm going to use Canva or Photoshop sometimes to put myself here. And then I'm going to put some text like the new GPT update or GPT-4. Hopefully Dolly gets to the point where I just literally train these to be with the whole thing, with the text. And even at some point, I guess it could pull a picture of me and add it. And then the last GPT that I've built for, again, this suite of GPT specifically for creating YouTube videos, I built this one. This one is called SEO Description Wizard. And basically... I use another app because I still couldn't get GPTs to do exactly this part. So I use this app here. This is called Descript. This is just an app on my computer called Descript. I drop a video here and it gives me the entire transcription. This is the exact transcription of the video I recently posted. And then I just go to publish and I export the document. So this is just a Word doc basically. Then with this GPT SEO wizard, I need something in the description of any YouTube video I post. So you could actually rank in search. A lot of my videos rank number one in YouTube search. A lot of times it's because I take my time with the description, make sure they're for the search engine. Cause sometimes they show up in Google too. I upload it here. Here's another one I've downloaded here for the Microsoft Copilot Pro video. And I just have to press enter. And he gave me a description and I asked for a simpler one. So this part right here, just because I asked for a simpler one, that means I have to refine that GPT. This is the latest one I built, so I haven't really taken the time to refine the GPT. But once I do refine it, I don't have to say, give me the simpler version here. 
and it gave me a shorter version. So I could refine the GPT to know, hey, this is the length I want. This is the formatting I want. I don't like the formatting either. It's all just one paragraph. Maybe I'm going to break that up. So then you go back into your custom GPT, you refine it, and then you come back to chat GPT next time, and then you have a more refined version. So I do still have to go through the refining of this. A lot of people build these GPTs and they kind of let them go. I constantly refine them if they're not getting me what I want. And they're not perfect. Again, it's a little bit in beta, but it's gonna get there and it's gonna be huge, the ability to connect all these different GPTs, basically infinite amount, as long as you have credit and the chat keeps going, you could do this with a ton of different GPTs and daisy chain them, make them a suite. And I think the power of them is gonna eventually come to the public GPTs. But right now, I prefer to have control on all the GPTs that I make that I daisy chain for a very specific use case. You could do this with marketing, for ad creation, for email copy, customer service. Think about the different GPTs. That basically, each task should have its own GPT and then daisy chain them in the same conversation and it will know the memory. You don't have to take the time to prompt it from a previous chat. And if you really wanna take GPTs to the next level, these custom GPTs, I recently made a custom GPT course, an entire course here on exactly setting up these custom GPTs, more advanced things like actions, things that could take these GPTs and have them actually perform tasks like sending emails. So I do have that on skillleap.ai and I'll link this below. Basically, this is about 24, 25 different videos. It has different resource guides. PDFs that you could download. And this is all part of our subscription platform where you get access to 20 some different courses, all for the same subscription price with a free trial that we still have. We still have our free trial. So you could enroll in any course for free to make sure it's a good fit. So again, I'll link that below and I will see you on the next video.